And now, back to the Ask the Dom Show on 102.5 The Bone. Mr. Ligori, you can uh, introduce uh, our caller on line two. I believe Dr. Todd Cielo. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, uh, Dr. Cielo, we've been talking, I don't know how much of the show you've listened to, but we've been talking about this House Bill uh, 837, which uh, seems to affect anyone who rides in a vehicle in the state of Florida. So that's a few people. Uh, What is your take on the uh, bill from both a a physician and obviously a physician who uh, cares for uh, patients? You know, I've been treating patients in uh, Tampa, Florida for 25 years, since 1998. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of uh, cycles with insurance companies and uh, trying to change laws and bills. And and this one's very scary. And it's very scary for the patients of Florida, because if, if this bill passes, these patients will not be able to get care from these physicians and the needed care that they need from a therapy standpoint, from a diagnostic standpoint, from a um, rehab standpoint. And um, it's going to affect all the small businesses, not just from an attorney standpoint, but from a a physician standpoint. So let's bring this back to you, Spike. So if you, if Spike, you get an, if you get an injury. Ow. Ow. Okay. So uh, uh, Dr. Cielo, Spike gets in an injury and he needs to go see you. What's the change on the ground for him if this bill passes? When he, if he, He's got his backs all torqued up and he needs to come see you. How does it change what he can do? So what happens is when a patient gets in a car accident, they come in, we have a, a consultation, go over signs and symptoms, and then we have to go through a checklist. And that checklist is, is the detective work that all physicians do in this personal injury arena. And then that checklist is, hey, let's do some initial imaging, x-rays, Then we do some advanced imaging. We do some MRI diagnostics. And then we find out exactly what has transpired from this um, macro trauma from this car accident. And then now we have to start issuing some type of care plan. And when the insurance companies don't take care of their responsibilities, a lot of these doctors in Florida are going to say, I don't want to take care of this patient now. And then the patient's stuck holding the bag, not only just the bag of all these injuries, but the bag of pain and, and the pain management and the um, uh, maintenance of these patients is cr- very crucial in the state of Florida. And if these physicians don't have a chance to get paid and we have to chase down the insurance companies to get paid, then the, phys- then the uh, patient is at a loss. So that's, that's the thing. Go ahead, Spike. So what I've been hearing is all night is that they, well, if you go into litigation or the courts, they can't talk about certain things, correct? So if I need $200,000 worth of medical bills and the defendant says no, we can't say why? You can't even say you're going to need 200000 What's going to end up happening is the most you're going to be able to put in front of that jury are Medicare Obviously. rates. And I would ask the doctor, doctor, what's your feeling about working for Medicare rates? So here's the problem. When we're talking about Medicare rates, we're talking about the bare minimum. And when we have small businesses, you know, we have employees that are helping us tend to these patients. And Medicare rates are the bare absolute minimum that these doctors are getting reimbursed for these rendered services. And the the sad part is all these modalities, all these therapies, all these crucial diagnostics are needed. And then these MRI companies are going to say, hey, we don't want to do do these MRIs and these advanced diagnostic procedures and find out exactly what's wrong because we're not going to get paid either. And now, again, the patient's at a loss. So when he was so on Spike is in a car accident, if this bill goes through, there's going to be a lot less people that are going to be willing to to see him and treat him because there's just no money there. It guts the money. And I, it cut, does come down to money, but people got to make a living. Uh, but it guts the it, it guts the money um, that doctors will be paid. So they're not going to take patients coming in their door. Yes. And then my biggest concern, here's my biggest concern, and, and I don't want to look at a, at a crystal ball and I don't want to make assumptions, but you know, in the early two thousands, what we experience is the opioid epidemic. And I don't want these patients to go through this medical maze of opioids and painkillers when we can take care of these disc injuries, these sprain strains from a therapeutic rehab standpoint with the proper types of anti-inflammatories 
rather than a painkiller, uh, a, a sleeping drug, and or a painkiller. And, you know, the, again, the patient's at a loss. You know, until, to, until today, Keith, I'm, I'm a fairly informed person. I don't know. Uh, I didn't know anything about House Bill 837. Most people don't. Yeah. And it's, it's, but when you start getting into it and reading it, it's, it's pretty disturbing. This really takes, takes the pressure off the insurance companies to really just allow them to do what they want to do. And, and it's going to make it the Wild West, really. And you don't see this in any type of media, which is, which is scary because this needs to be, be bring about all of us. Right, right. You know, because if we miss it, you know, it's, it's kind of like just push it under the rug until we lose and we, we can't keep losing. That's right. That's um, a, great point. a good example is uh, what I told you, uh, what, I, what I was talking about off air. You know, I was in a traffic accident. It took me three years and a lot of physical therapy, a lot of shots, injections, and the whole nine yards to get to where I am now. And now that bill gets passed. I don't have anything. Yeah, well, someone who went through exactly what you went through is going to have a much more difficult time. That's, much more difficult. That's that, the problem. That's they're insane. just trying to drop the value of any of these claims in half is really so, essentially So, what again, what does the person do? They go to... Callmeonmycell.com. We have in there a link. Where you scroll down the page. It says vote no to House Bill 837. You go to that link, and it you can go type in. When you see the couple different places, you can either send an email to the uh, Senate President Kathleen Pasadomo or the House Speaker Paul Renner. It's right there. It'll open up your email, or if you go type in, click on the uh, Senate or the House, and then you could research which uh, House representative and senators in your area, and you could send them an email saying, just vote no on House Bill 837.